The reading comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 to 13. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who worked out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. This is the word of God. Thanks, Jackie. I love the book of Ephesians. I've said that before. There's so much in it. So it's always a a joy when I have the chance to um, speak about it. I want you just to think back, those of us that were here right at the beginning of the service, and to remember what we shared with each other, that God loves us. God loves you. God loves me, God loves each and every one of us. And that's, if you don't remember anything else, if you fall to sleep now, that's fine. Just remember that this week, that God loves you. God has chosen you. God has chosen me. God has chosen us. I wonder if you believe that. I know Mark, I listened to Mark's sermon last week, it was brilliant. And uh, I remember him saying that, He finds that very easy to believe for other people, but it's harder to believe for himself. And I think that's true of many of us, isn't it? We can think, oh yeah, that's true. That's true for Shelley, or it's true for Jackie, or it's true for Lawrence, or whoever. But it's true for you too, for each and every one of us, for each and every child that's down there in the rec house now, for all those that are usually here on a Sunday morning, for each and every person in our community, God loves them. He loves you. And he loves me. And I hope, I pray, that that will sink into our hearts this morning. If we just go through that passage, there are lots of, well, it's a lot of words to start with. It's a classic Paul, isn't it, with lots of long sentences split up by the people that have put verse numbers in. And we look at it and go, goodness gracious me. But if we just go through, in verse 3, the little numbers, um, the tiny little numbers in the reading there are the verse numbers, which might just help you as we talk through it. In verse 3, it says that God has blessed us. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. And I hope we'll understand a bit more what that means as we go through. In verse 4, it says, He, that's God, has chosen us before the creation of the world, before there were sea and skies, before there were trees and earth, before any of that, he chose us. He chose each one of us to be holy and blameless. Verse 5 says that he has predestined us. There's a word we don't use very much. He's, He's chosen us, he's predestined us, he's picked us out for adoption as his sons. Now, when Paul was writing this, it was only the sons in the family who inherited anything. And that's why it says he's adopted us as his sons. He's adopted us, men and women, female and male, 
as his sons, as his heirs, as people who are going to inherit from him. That's why it says sons. It's not only the men that are going to be specially chosen to inherit. All of us, each and every one of us, are chosen, are predestined to be his sons, to be his heirs. In verse 6, it says, he has given us, he's given us a gift of grace. He's given us grace. In verse 7, it says, in him we have redemption. He has redeemed us with grace. Whenever I think of redemption, it shows my age now. Do you remember the little um, green shield stamps? But the younger ones of us amongst us, if you think of, you go into Sainsbury's and you get the sports vouchers for school, we get given them, don't we? And we can redeem them. Green shield stamps, you could collect them up. You had ones and you had tens and you could collect them into books and you could go to somewhere, I'm not sure where we went to, and you could redeem them. You could trade them in for, for goods. And it's the same with the Sainsbury's vouchers. A shop, thanks Gary, certain shops. It's the same with the, the sports vouchers for schools. The schools collect them in and then they can send them off and they get amazing sports equipment. So, but redemption, we've been redeemed. I'm going to talk about that in a bit more in a minute. But we have been redeemed by God. Jesus' death on the cross, which we'll remember at communion in a little while. He has, he has paid for us. He's traded his son, Jesus, for our salvation, for our life, for our eternity with him. Instead of tra- trading in the green shield stamps, in a way God's traded in his son's life. His son died on the cross for us so that we could have life. And we could have an eternity and any hope with him. Verse 8, he has lavished us. It's that word. That seems to come up a lot lately. I keep thinking of that Miranda bit. He lavished us. That's why I say that every time that comes. He's lavished us. What's he lavished us with? He's lavished us with grace. That's not a bad, um, in a few verses, that's not a bad start, is it? He's blessed us. He's chosen us. He's predestined us. He's given us. He's redeemed us. He's lavished us. That's each and every one of us in here this morning with all those things. And then we go on in verse 9. It says he's revealed, he's made known to us. He's shared with us this plan that he has. In verse 10, it says that he has planned unity. He's made a plan for everything under heaven and earth to to come back into unity with him like it was Um, right back at the beginning of time in the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve were living in harmony one day that's all going to be restored that's the plan that's what he has planned for us that's a pretty good inheritance isn't it to be blessed to be chosen to be given to be redeemed to be let into the secret to be revealed to us to be a part of God's plan that's true for each and every one of us he loves us He loves you and he wants to pour his blessing into you and onto you. Now, before you get too excited, that doesn't mean if you go and buy a lottery ticket on Wednesday, he's going to guarantee that you win. Sorry about that. I can't promise that. It's not necessarily a financial blessing. It might not even be a health blessing, but it is a blessing that we have been chosen specially by him. The people that were chosen in the teens today, there was probably an element of fear in them. Why on earth have I got to stand at the front here? What is going to Kate make us do? But they were chosen. And there's that also part of us that thinks, oh, Nikki and Lisa chose me this morning. I'm a bit scared about what I'm going to have to do. But I've been chosen. Sarah's laughing. She obviously relates to that. Didn't know quite what Nikki was going to get her to do. But she'd been chosen. God has chosen each one of us and he wants to pour into us pour onto us pour into our community his spiritual blessings he has a plan he has a plan for us that we're all going to be adopted as his children that's what he longs for that we all come to know and love him now i could get into some great deep theological debate about predestination i'm not going to do that this morning it's sunday morning it's hot I'm not going to do that. Some would say that we are, there's only a certain number that are chosen, a very small number who are predestined who are chosen. Others would say that everybody's chosen. Everyone's going to be in heaven. doesn't matter what happens. Everyone's going to be in heaven at the end. Well, I believe actually that's what God wants. He wants for everybody to know his love and he, know, he wants all of us to be in his kingdom. But we have a choice. 
about that. He doesn't force us all in. We have a choice about whether we choose to be a part of his kingdom. His heart's desire is for all of us to be in his kingdom with him now and for eternity. But we have a choice about whether we accept that gift of grace, that redemption by his son on the cross. And actually, he wants us to praise and glorify him. He wants us to to praise him, to give praise of his glory. In the second half of the reading, it says we've been chosen, we've been predestined in order to praise and glorify him, to give glory and honour to God, our creator, our maker, our saviour, our friend, our Lord. And he wants us to be included in Christ. He wants us to be in Christ, in the body of Christ, working and serving and praising him. And so much so that he's promised us the Holy Spirit. If you remember back to Easter, just after Easter, that we then had Pentecost, and we remembered the promise, Jesus promised his people, the disciples, that there was the Holy Spirit coming to help them. And we, if we choose to follow him, if we choose to be a part of his kingdom, if we choose to accept this blessing that he's promised us, then he gives us the Holy Spirit as, as a seal, as a mark, as a promise for our lives here today and of what is going to be in eternity. Mark talked last week, and we've talked a lot lately, about being in the here and now. And one day, everything will be restored into its completeness. In the, at the moment, we live in that in-between time when we can know God and we can know his love and his favour. But the world isn't yet quite in that place of unity, but it will be one day a new heaven and a new earth. That's not a bad start for Sunday morning, is it? That's a good good reading. It's amazing to think of all those things that God has chosen, his plan for us to carry out, to be loved by him, to be blessed by him, to be a son of his. But I know, just talking to you and talking to friends, that we don't always feel like that. We don't always feel all of those things. And it's deep sometimes, isn't it? I was chatting to a friend just this week, and these examples I'm going to give, they're not, they might well not be, they probably aren't about anybody in this room, so don't sit there thinking, I think I know who that is. And they're all within the last month. And that's when you listen to people's stories, you hear, you hear things. I was chatting to a friend the other day who had met her mum for coffee in town. Her mum has, in the last couple of years, got remarried. And her mum said to her, well, I've got a new family now. You make your family and I've got a new family now. Now, she didn't say to me, I felt really rejected by my mum. She didn't say that. She was incredibly gracious. But that's what underneath was lying, that feeling of rejection, of not, of not being... Not that she isn't loved, but not being her mum's daughter anymore. That sense of rejection. That isn't true for us in God. We are chosen to be his sons, to be his daughters, to be his heirs. And maybe there's other people who feel that. I was going to say, I met another friend for coffee yesterday. I haven't been doing only coffee breaks. Honestly, honestly, I haven't. I met another friend for coffee in town yesterday. And she's had all sorts of things go on in her life but she was just sharing a story when she was about five or six something happened to her which really wasn't great and she felt really hurt by it she couldn't tell her mum and dad at the time but a few weeks later she went to them and told them about it and they said oh well those things happen those things happen this poor as a girl I mean she's grown up now as a girl she was devastated and she wanted someone to say that's not right and to be there and protect her and they just feel those things happen to children that's how it is you know she i think she felt a sense of abandonment the people she thought were going to give her a hug and say okay this you know that wasn't what she got there's people who feel guilty people who i talk to who i think even people who i, I look at and think wow they are an amazing model of jesus on earth and they say to me they feel guilty. They've got all sorts of guilt going on inside them. And you think, what do you feel guilty about? You do so much to bless people. What, what are you feeling guilty about? People feel ashamed. People feel ashamed that they can't do what they think they should be doing, that they maybe something to do with work, that they haven't got the work they should. They carry shame around. 
Maybe it's despair. I've got another friend who's going through a really tough time at the minute who just... She, he can't see a way out of it. He can't see a way out of his situation. And despair is written all over him. And he wears a good mask. If you bumped into him in the street, you wouldn't have a clue what was going on. But if you sit and have a cup of coffee with him, a cup of tea is his favourite. No, actually, a can of something is probably his favourite. But, um, it, you know, it's despair. I can't. Catherine, he calls me, I can't get out of this. I, I, don't, I can't see a way out. There's a sense of fate about us, isn't it? We watch the news and it can almost feel inevitable. There's that sense of fate. There's nothing we can do to change the world that we're in. There's nothing that we can do to make it a better place. A sense of fate. That's not true. There's a plan. God has a plan for us. It isn't just down to fate. There is a plan for each and every one of us. There is a plan for our world to be reunited with its maker to be made clean and whole and pure and joyous again. People carry around a sense of failure. I never, I never get things right. I never get it right. I always get it wrong. doesn't matter how hard I try, I always get it wrong. A sense of doubt. A doubt about the love. As I said, Mark said last week, and he's not the only one, I know. I feel the same sometimes. You look and you think, well, that's all right for them, but it's not for me. All those things we carry around with us and a whole lot of other stuff. And maybe some of those things I've said this morning have kind of hit you and you go, oh, Kate's talking about me this morning. I'm not talking about anyone in this room. Actually, other than Mark that I've voiced and said to Mark, none of the other stories are about anyone in this room. But I know, looking around, I, we, we feel some of those things, don't we? Shame, despair, guilt. We feel fatalistic. We feel abandoned. If we're neglected, all those things. But God, God of love, has chosen us. He's given us great things. He's redeemed us. He wants to lavish his love upon us. He's got a plan. He's made it known. The plan isn't secret. You read the Bible, the plan is there. It's written for us. He's going to redeem us. He has redeemed us. He's going to bring it back into full unity together. And we have the mark of the Holy Spirit. If we believe in him, we have the mark of the Holy Spirit as our comfort, as our guide, as our enabler to live in the here and now. Now, I don't know if you're sitting there thinking, okay, I don't understand anything you're talking about. This is, this is new to me. I don't understand it. Talk to me afterwards and I'll make it even clearer to you if I can. Maybe some of us have been sitting here as Christians for a long time and we think, oh, but Kate, it's all right you're saying that. You're paid to say that. But it's true. It's true for each and every one of us. Sometimes we can think that God is, is a remote person, sometimes even a remote thing in outer space who is just sitting there watching. Maybe we don't even think that much. But you know, he's not. He wants to be a part of our life. He has a plan for us. We're included in Christ. He's at work in our lives, in our community. He's at live and at work in us. He was alive when Jesus came and lived on the earth and died on the cross and rose again and was resurrected. God is at work in our lives. He's not a remote being who doesn't care and doesn't love us. He's invested in us and he's invested in us big time. He gave us his son. That's the biggest gift that anyone could give. And none of us are worthless. None of us are worthless. We all have a worth. We are all precious to God. We're all dearly, dearly beloved by him. And our value comes from him. Stuff happens in the world that knocks our confidence, that takes away our self-worth. And sometimes the world doesn't always value us as it should. But you know, God values us. God values each and every one of us. Each and every one of us is precious to him. And he wants us to know that so we can live to his praise and his glory. In verse 12 it says, um, we were the first to put our hope in Christ so that we might be for the praise of his glory. The end of verse 14 it says, um, the Holy Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance and the, until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. 
those of us who were down at the Abbey a couple of weeks ago, I think we sensed that in the community, didn't we? Uh, Mark was talking about a community of grace last week, but they, we could see we, God was honoured and praised through how that community served us. I think if you go into Rose Cottage, you see that with Nathan and the team down there. They serve the people that go in. Their lives are for the praise and for the glory of God. And that's who we are. We're made, we're created, we're chosen, we're redeemed, we're blessed. So that we can praise and honour and glorify God. And so that we can have a hope and a worth that's in him. I'm going to say it again. God loves you. God loves each and every one of us. Can you just turn to someone beside you and just say to them, God loves you. Go on, get anyone, anyone near you. Okay, now the harder bit. And I want you to say it out loud. And I want you to look at the ceiling, you can look at me, you can look where you like. I want you to say to yourself, God loves me. Go on, off to yourself. God loves me me God loves me God loves you God loves me we can say it to someone else say it to yourself and if you don't do anything else this week maybe say to yourself every morning as you get up and every night as you go to bed God loves me those three words this week and just let his love flow into you fill you up afresh so that you don't feel abandoned so you don't feel alone so you don't feel worthless this week We're going to come to communion in a minute when we remember what Jesus did on the cross for us, that redemption, that that purchase of us, that the gift of life that he's given us, that we can be set free from our fears, from our worries, from our loneliness because of Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection. He's conquered death. He's overcome death. And one day we'll know what that's like when we're in eternity with him, rejoicing with the angels. But until then, we have this reminder that we have in communion. But before we come to actually uh, start the communion part of the service, they're just going to ask us to be quiet. And maybe some of those things that I've said, you think, oh, that's just me. Then just have a moment to, to come to God and just say, I want to be different. I want to know things differently. I want to know what it is to be chosen and loved by you.